Hey, we are live with no, Ronak. Hi, hi Ronak. Hi. Ronak, Ronak is an Atheist Republic patron. Um, and what are we... T- well, so you wanted to talk about some Hindutva reaction, outrage, when we when people talk about caste system, right? And then after we... And then yeah. you wanted to show us some examples. And then after we talk about that, then you wanted to go back to the top uh, discussion we were having about some Hindu scripture and some stories, yeah. some mythology. Sounds yeah, exciting. Yeah. All right, so let's... Uh, do you want to tell people... It's a continuation of the previous video. So yeah. you, if you haven't watched the previous video, I mean, you can watch the previous video. Like it is Hindu, a- Hindu atheist uh, explain something. It is something like that, the title I forgot. So you can watch okay. that. Okay, okay so cool. I'm uh, sharing the screen with you. Oh, let me bring uh, it up. Oops, hold on. Add to stream. All right, here it is. It's on the screen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is visible. So, okay. So, mm-hmm. someone in the previous video, I was talking about uh, especially the Devi Mahatmya, which is a uh, text about the goddess, Sanskrit mm-hmm. text about the goddess. So, in between, I told one line that uh, uh, about some caste and uh, that Bhagavad Gita and Devi Mahatmya, I mean, in sl- some way, they give some legitimacy to the caste system or at least they assume an mm-hmm. underlying framework of the caste system like it's not like they're promoting caste system but they assume that the caste is there and it, it is just there it's a natural thing like right. they assume Ka- kind of like the quran where it, um that doesn't say hey slavery is okay but it just yeah, refer yeah, or the it, bible it, 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 yeah it is the bible that slavery is just there and it's natural it's, yes. it doesn't talk i mean it doesn't see right. it as a problem in fact it doesn't see it as a problem it talks about it as if it's a natural order of things it's it doesn't a, yeah, say it, talks, it doesn't say like the bible or the quran they don't say like hey slavery is great but they just yeah they don't condemn it and they talk about yeah, it as yeah, if yeah. it's not so you're saying basically hindu scripture also talks about casteism as if it's a natural order of things um yeah, yeah. okay so that that's what you were saying and what did the comment yeah. section say okay okay show us so uh, first of all, he was saying uh, this person is there. He's saying that f- he is faking nonsense. So okay, so some people... get, let, let's just clarify. This is an atheist republic video, and this is you. And uh, we'll go up. Let's look at the video. Let's go up. Go up. Scroll up. Oh yeah, sorry, all the way up. Never mind. We, um, yeah, just go up, go up. Oh yeah. So this is a video of you and me on atheist republic, and this is somebody commenting about you. You mentioning that. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's see the comments. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to see. I just wanted to give people some context. Where do you go? Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Okay. He's okay. taking on that. Okay. So someone replies, uh, "Idiots uh, always lecture on something he doesn't know. So don't give importance to the things that doesn't matter to you. Let them talk whatever they like. Okay. It makes some sense at least. In every channel, an Indian becomes wise on religion, but in reality, he's frustrated. Okay. Let's. <laughs> then I ask, uh, "Who is faking? Who is faking?" So just I just I ask. Then he is saying, oh, the, gr- the green." The green one is you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, okay. this one is a regular troller. I understood later on. This is just another takia. I don't know what does this word mean. Uh, I mean, when it comes to Islam or Christianity, these guys quote verses. But when it comes to Hinduism, they talk BS. There is no hard work required to tell lies. So if you mm-hmm. are the same Ronak Bhatra as in the video, then you have zero knowledge of India or Hinduism. Okay. So then I say, okay, tell me where I was wrong. So he says, you were wrong in almost everything you said. Okay, let's start in chronological order. Two for you said caste system is a part of religious text. Dude, Varna system and caste system are to separate things. I mean, I have been listening to the I mean, I have been listening this since like many days. Like Varna and caste are to separate things. But in reality, I mean, I don't know. Like, what is the basis of that argument even? Uh, and then, uh, to show me where caste Wait, can you mentioned. explain Ver- what is Varna system? What is Varna? You don't have to go okay. to the oh. Oh, yeah, okay, so in Varna system, see, in the Puranic scriptures, there is a Varna system or hmm. even sometimes it is mentioned as Jati. So there are four different categories of people. There is Brahmins, Kshatriyas, hmm. uh, Vaishyas and Shudras. So it is it, even the caste duties are mentioned in many Puranic and I mean other kind of scriptures that the Brahmins are supposed to like uh, read the religious scriptures and perform religious things and all. The hmm. Kshatriyas are I mean, supposed to be kings and warriors and perform battles and all. And then are comes the Vaishyas, they are the tradesmen, they do involving trading activities, agricultural activities, etc. Mm. And uh, there are the Shudras who serve all the three castes, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. the three other castes, okay? They and are then like there's the servant and, then there's and all. Servant, and then there's the no, outcast. No, no, the Puranic, the, the Puranic scriptures Pur- don't talk about them. Don't talk about that, okay. And this that's the, 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 the Verna? 
Yes, it's that is the Verna. one. This, so this is how is that? Word. That sounds that sounds like a caste system. How how do people say that separate from yeah, caste and, system? Yeah, and the point is that when you talk about the modern caste system, still these four categories are there. These four still get. I mean, just that the scriptures don't say that essentially the caste system is birth on the basis of birth. They don't explicitly say that, but it doesn't mean that. I mean, we are not sure whether it is on the basis of birth or on the basis of occupation. And even if it is on the basis of occupation, how does it justify that? I mean, uh, that doctors should be treated separately. Separately, then engineers should be treated separately. They they can't sit together. I mean, though it doesn't say that. I mean, there is no untouchability and all these things. But oh, okay, uh, he, and untouchability and all these things also are there in some later scriptures. Actually, uh, I mean, it is there in some other scriptures where they say that okay, like people who eat beef and all these are actually, hmm. I mean, in some form, I mean, impure or something like that. They are they become the outcasts and all. I mean. This is there in the Manus Smriti and all, which texts are actually burned regularly in India, so no one considers them seriously nowadays. Anyway, but still, and that's why I think the I mean, you you sometimes say like uh, suppose the Muslim, you say no, the Muslim is a, like a race in India. Mm. And I understand yeah, it very, I, very. I mean, I, I can connect with this. Like, suppose for example, like even the persons who are not bigoted, like for example, my parents. Suppose I. To, to I showed like okay, he I, I'm going to have a call with him, and my mother is. Like oh he's so handsome. I mean he, he's handsome because he's a Muslim. I'm like but he's now an ex-Muslim. No, but no he is a Muslim. For my mother you are not an ex-Muslim criticizing Islam. You are a Muslim criticizing Islam because Muslim is like itself a race or something. And Muslim people are handsome yeah, and because I mean Muslim is like an Arabic or Persian identity that is itself becomes a Muslim or something. Yeah, like that. I I heard that they keep telling kind me that Muslim. they tell me that being Muslim is in your DNA. Once a Muslim, always yeah, yeah, a Muslim. Yeah. So for um, Indians, the Muslim is like a like Turkish. Uh, Iranian and Arabic ancestry itself is like Muslim ancestry. Like mm -hmm. that is the identity of Muslim, basically. So and how... moreover, especially, especially eating beef is another thing which they identify Muslims with. So if Muslims are born in a community where beef is being eaten, then they are impure because beef eating is impure. So, so I how mean, how is this how is this relate to the relationship between the Verna and the caste system? How how does this relate to each other? Yeah, because Muslims also come in the category of Dalits in that sense because Muslims are also untouchables in some sense because you can't touch like if my grandparents and my grand grandparents they would not go to right. a Muslim household and no, eat food. Yeah, with yeah them. I, I know, they but they consider it impure to eat food with a Muslim or share food with a Muslim or even uh, give permission to a Muslim to enter into the house but because that will be considered something which is not uh, very pure okay. or something. Like that. Okay, but so going back to the Verna, the argument for in favor of that is like yeah, but Verna doesn't include this untouchability. Okay, Verna doesn't include this right. untouchability. It but, is just talking about four different categories of people who are de doing different kinds of jobs. It is not considering any right. like untouchability. And they say, and they, to defend that, they say that that's not based on heritage, that's based on merit. Uh, they don't explicitly say anything about that. They just mm. say that these are the duties of these categories of people. But how so, are these categories meant to be? Like, is it on the basis of birthright or is it on the basis of, I mean, just merit or something? We don't know. But uh, I mean, we don't know means, I mean, in many of the, like in the main scriptures, it is not told. I'm not sure about which scripture tells this. But in the main scriptures that uh, Bhagavad Gita and all, it doesn't explicitly say like whether it is on the basis of birthright or anything. So these Vernas, how old they are? Uh, the, the, the I mean, Verna these, are, these are these are much old. I mean, these are around two thousand years old or even earlier. But modern genetic studies shows that endogamy. Endogamy means the uh, process of like restricting marriage to specific groups. Like specific group can marry within itself. This process starts around two thousand years ago. This is modern genetic studies show that. So it is assumed that even if the caste system had older roots but it became like a based on birth system and you can't marry outside your caste this things developed right. 2000 years ago so i think that oh that that part that part developed 2000 years ago right yeah but the, the system may be existing earlier but earlier it may be on the basis of occupation and not on the basis of birth right but later on so it the, became like a, so i'm gonna say this and you tell me if this is ch um a fair depiction of what happens okay so we know based on the er the oldest like some of the oldest texts right that whatever the caste system is today even though it might have been different originally it it started based on some of the oldest hindu texts maybe in a different form but it is rooted in some of the earliest hindu texts okay we don't know how ex how much exactly we don't have any proof that how much exactly what it was based on um, heritage 
but we know that it was rooted like even if you go to the oldest text there was something that is close to what we have as caste system today right yeah. no, see, and even oh, let, a... me, let, let, let me let me finish this and you tell me if this is fair and later on even though it was still a long time ago like around 2000 years ago the, whatever that original form of it was like the verno or whatever it turned into at at least it's been at least 2000 years that it turned into something that is closer to the caste system today which is based on heritage based on blood right not based on merit and that thing w w it turned into that long time ago enough for us to be to be able to say that the caste system based on heritage is part of is canon in the hindu in the hinduism right it's part of it like it tied v very yeah. well into hinduism is that fair description yeah now 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 see now there is again i want to say something here like for some people even in the comments i can see for some people hinduism is like they want a very monolithic structure of hinduism like islam and christianity they see they despise islam and christianity but on the other hand they get inspired from them so much they want a monolithic mm -hmm. structure for islam i mean hinduism like okay mm -hmm. hinduism is only what is given in the bhagavad gita or in one text in sanskrit text but i think hinduism is not like that. all the traditions i mean when mm -hmm. i said about animal sacrifices they are like oh these are tribal traditions this is not hinduism tribal tradition is also hinduism because tribes are within india anything that happens within india is hinduism like that mm. is my definition. I mean, this is the academic definition of Hinduism, that it is an umbrella term for all the traditions existing within Hinduism. It is not necessary that it is there in some Sanskrit text written thousands of years ago, and then only it is Hinduism. It's not like that. It can be a very right. recent thing, but if it is in the culture, then it is Hinduism. It's a part of Hinduism. It's very interesting because the people who want to defend Hinduism, first, when you... They say Hinduism is many things. It's not just one like it's not one thing yeah, like yeah, Christianity. Yeah, yeah. And then when you say like, okay, this is I have a problem with this in Hinduism, and they, like they say, oh, this is not Hinduism. And I'm like, wait yeah, a minute, yeah, you yeah. Said, <laughs> and like you cannot say this is not Hinduism, and Hinduism is so many different things at the same time. If this is not Hinduism, then there's a core thing that is Hinduism. And if if it's a core thing that is Hinduism, then this, what is what are the fundamental things that makes sense, what makes what, something Hinduism? And if there is no fundamental thing and it's like fluid, then what I'm criticizing as part of Hinduism, then it's, it's part of Hinduism because you just told me that many things could be part of Hinduism. So I, like yeah, yeah. like they want to have their cake and eat it too. Like um, yeah. it's where yeah. And another thing is that like suppose I, in the earlier video I talked about Gita Govinda, a text which is like. Um, a 10th or 11th century text which was uh, written I mean it is about Radha and Krishna the love between them and I shared some ero I mean a bit like erotic verses from th that text and some people are like oh don't mislead the people uh, you are I mean Gita Govinda is not a scripture for uh, Hindus and all I'm like okay I mean I mean see in Hinduism there is no like authentic I mean yes there are authentic scriptures like this is like a titular, like we say Vedas are the authentic scriptures. But in reality, this is not the case. How many Hindus know the what is there in the Vedas? I think 90% or 99% of the Hindus don't even know what is the content of the Vedas. They don't know. Mm -hmm. For them, like a local bhajan, that is devotional song, which was written maybe maybe 100 years ago, or even a song of the Bollywood, a devotional song from the Bollywood, makes more sense than a song from the Vedas. So, I mean... Mm -hmm. So though titular, like it is like the Queen of England. So it is like a titular position. Vedas are the authentic scriptures. But in reality, there is no authentic scripture in Hinduism. Everything is authentic. There is no like Sahi, Galat and all these things are not but, there. But even in religions that there is something called authentic and non-authentic and part canon and non-canon, yeah. uh, people don't know the Quran or know the Bible. Don't Like that's that's very similar. Like that part is very similar with... Christianity and Islam. Yeah, how many yeah. Muslims so, do you yeah, think? Know, how many I'm Muslims a, do you think I've read the Quran? Yeah, many Muslims don't know the Quran. I know, but uh, the point is that still they give a whole lot of importance on the Quran. But many sects of Hinduism don't give importance on the reading. I mean, this is just like nominal. They will say that the Vedas are great, but they don't give an importance on the reading of the Vedas. Like in mm. like like in ritual processes in, in our homes, the Bhagavad Gita may be studied or maybe the Devi Mahatmya that the text we were discussing in the last episode also, that text is, I mean, recited in pujas or worshippings. The Vedas are not recited many of the times. I'm not saying they are not at all recited, but they are not recited always. Yeah, but even when they're recited, people don't know what uh, what they're talking about. Like the Quran, Quran recited is recited all the time. Do you want to respond I mean, to Katie? He's saying here? something I disagree with so much with this. I didn't understand. Modern borders of India is younger than the term Hinduism. What does it mean? Yeah, I don't know. 
I just said you know. Modern borders of India is younger than the town. Okay, I mean I'm saying like any traditions within India. Okay, okay. So I mean he is oh, saying okay. that the modern borders of India. So anything that exists within the Indian subcontinent. Okay, so it may also be like uh, South Asia also. Like it may be in the South Asia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, anything that is also a part of Hinduism. In some so you're case. saying any so, ideology? Yeah. I don't I don't know if I like your idea, uh, your definition. Because let me let me challenge it. Okay, you're saying that anything. Okay, I'm hearing so much echo. Is there any way you could reduce my volume? No? I can't reduce your volume, by the way. I can... your, my volume, not your volume. Reduce my volume. Yeah, okay? yeah. So you're saying, I've actually heard this definition before. You're saying any ideas that come out of India subcontinent, that's technically Hinduism? Any? Yeah, but... I mean, see, these terms are not defined. I mean, first of all, for the Hinduism term was coined by Raja Ram Mohan Roy for, for the first yeah. time. Uh, and, and he defined it that way. Like, it, it was the original mm. definition. Okay, whatever Indian traditions are there, except Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism, because these are like organized religions, I mean, in some sense. So apart Wait. from that, whatever exists, that is Hinduism. So the, the, like the atheist, anti-religious, and materialist philosophers of, of India... Who hated? Yeah, many people consider them part of Hinduism, but uh, yeah. That, yeah, but that, I don't. That's no. You can't steal. It. Those are our people. <laughs> like, you can't take them. Yeah, but many people okay. consider. Many people consider <laughs> them like there are many naturalistic philosophies growing out of India. They consider it part of Hinduism, definitely. Like Char, I mean, there is a Charvak no. philosophy, Ajivika philosophy, Buddhist and Jain philosophy. Also, I, I consider like... them part of Hinduism in some sense because they are like uh, Indian traditions. I call it Indianism more like it. I mean, I don't know how to define that. Katie is saying, I, I would call that cultural, cultural appropriation. appropriation. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, you're culturally okay. appropriating atheism. <laughs> no, it is not. I mean, actually, yeah. I will share a word with you, Rigved, from also. Okay, okay. Wait, yeah. is Kama actually, Let us first talk about the comment, okay? Okay, okay. You like we can share? go and uh, we can argue about the definition of Hinduism, but that does it even matter much? I mean, I don't know. I mean, something which is okay. there in the Indian culture is Hinduism for me. Anyway. Mm. Okay, so where I was, like, uh, if you are the same, okay, okay, tell me what, where I was wrong. And then he says that uh, caste system is not a part, dude, Verna system and all these, uh, and don't give me Shakespeare to quote Christianity. What does it mean even? What I mean by that quote, uh, divine literature like Bhagavad Gita or Vedas, okay, you are simply a fool who doesn't know anything about Hinduism or Hindu calendar. Let me ask you a simple question. What was the age of Ram when he died? Using the, This is a response to some other person. Okay, so I can give you many quotes. Now I'm responding to him. I can give you many quotes, but you will say that the words Varna Jati don't mean caste. Tell, then tell me what's the Sanskrit word for it. Uh, but still let me give you one, okay? So, Maam Hi Partha Vyapa Shritye Pisyuha Papa Yonaha so this uh, uh, verse actually means that uh, let me translate a bit for you it means that uh, okay so the verse means that anyone uh, the verse means that anyone uh, maybe he is a he is even if that person is of sinful birth like the vaishyas shudras or women Still, if he, baby, um, uh, okay. Okay. So, if they give up to me, then uh, they will also know the ultimate reality. They will also get to the ultimate reality or spiritual enlightenment or whatever, like some sense of that. So, I can just exactly translation is not possible here. So, it is talking about a spiritual equality. It is saying that everyone is equal in uh, terms of like attaining spiritual enlightenment. Everyone can attain spiritual enlightenment, but. Mm. The, it is assuming that when Vaishyas and Shudras are of sinful birth. That is the problem I have. Wait, can you say that again? But you got cut for a second. But what? But it is assuming that the women, Vaishyas and Shudras are of sinful birth. Oh, they're of sinful birth? Yeah, the word used the, is the... Papa Yonaha. It means a Papa Yonaha means from sinful vagina. So it means that one who is born of a sinful uh, womb or vagina or something, so basically sinful birth, okay? So why are they saying that being a woman a is a birth. sinful birth? I'm not sure, maybe. But now some people will say that they're referring to social discrimination and also that is that can be one interpretation anyway. But okay. the woman, discrimination exists, else, that is what I want to say. Who else, who else is born of sinful birth? Um, women and who else? Vaishyas and Shudras, the two Varnas. 
the lower two varnas apart from brahmins and kshatriyas uh, the lower castes yeah yeah okay okay you have to say the english version okay cool all right let's go okay. okay so you you brought and where where what text was that that was in the vedas no it was in bhagavad gita bah- oh the gita oh okay okay cool Right, so continue. now the Gita here is uh, like let me say now the Gita and the translation is given by an uh, Indian Swami Swami Tejo Mayananda. So this is you they can't say that this is a uh, huh, so they can't say that this is a uh, I mean a propaganda translation by uh, uh, what can I say some kind of I mean some English person or something. So because this is by a traditional religious person, this translation. Anyway, mm-hmm. now the Gita here is not promoting discrimination, but is rather talking about spiritual equality. But it can't be denied that there is an underlying assumption that women, Shudras and Vaish- Vaishyas, are of sinful birth. Even if Shudra mm-hmm. and Vaishya are based on labor division, how justified is it to assume that some professions, along with women, are of sinful birth? these are excellent things as well there are excellent things as well as somewhat problematic things in scriptures i try to take mm-hmm. the good and also acknowledge the problem so that we may correct it so i said that now he is again saying me the kia and okay. half knowledge both are dangerous so basically there is no refutation oh. of what i said so he is saying the kia and half knowledge so that is the hindutva okay so, so they do, don't do you know what refutation. do you know what tariya means do you want do you know what tariya means No, I am not sure what it means. What it okay, means? Okay, Tariya is like he's accusing you of Tariya, so he's accusing that you're a secret Muslim, that is lying. Oh, I thought so. Because wow. t- because lying is he's saying that ta- uh, lying uh, is part of Islamic tradition as a way to like attack, and he's accusing you of being a secret Muslim that is trying to destroy Hinduism. Okay, That's so anyone who criticizes uh, Hinduism, and so their uh, idea is so binary, so Hindu and Muslim. So someone who is not, I mean. someone mm-hmm. who is not appreciating everything about i mean even not mm-hmm. everything like someone who is just finding a flaw in some idea he is a muslim like uh, sick, what kind of yeah. idea is and that if, yeah know. like okay. everybody everybody so they can, hate must i can, I can yeah. actually show you so someone who thinks i am a secret muslim i can show you my uh, my no nope, uh, the worshiping all, place in my house let me show you the worshiping is, oh, place show, in my house show, now show. please <laughs> don't do some offensive thing no, here no this, yeah. this is all taqiyah so this is all taqiyah this is this is the this is this is the worship being placed in my house my mother has given this flowers and all mm. no nope. no okay. i don't believe you secret muslim your secret this is all yeah. lie this is all a lie <laughs> yeah. yeah you prepared all this is all part of your tahiya you're a secret muslim <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no but this is how this is how binary they think you either love hinduism or you are in fact in fact caste system has been criticized by many hindu religious gurus also some hindu religious gurus supported it but some hindu traditional gurus actually talked severely against caste system they have Talked about right. caste system. Uh, right. I mean, they're, they're talked against caste system. Actually. No, they're, they're all Muslims. all of them. They're all secret Muslims. <laughs> okay, we're going. This is so yeah. Much fun. So okay. now he is t- telling this people like you uh, do do one or the other. The words you quoted is when Krishna uh, was explaining bhakti yoga. Since you seem to know that varna means a occupation and you claim that you have read Gita, you should know that Brahmins jnana yoga applies for Kshatriya karma yoga for women and employees. and uh, farmers vaishya and shudra only bhakti yoga is applicable so in the uh, in the bhagavad gita there are uh, four i mean different chapters so gyan yoga means the chapter of knowledge okay so they are saying that uh, the brahmins and the kshatriyas they they should uh, no the brahmin should actually read uh, read the gyan yoga the chapter of knowledge and for kshatriyas the chapter of action that is the karma yoga and the bhakti that is the devotion the chapter of devotion it is for the women and the lower castes okay so that is the vaishyas and shudras okay so it, there is no discrimination basically he is saying so but i mean even if i say that this is labor based division and the chapters are different but why they are assuming someone to be of sinful birth and why mm. women are included why is knowledge not for women i mean what, what kind of thing is that i don't know right right then he is again explaining a brahmin or a kshatriya won't be a brahmin or a kshatriya they kind of sound like a whole bunch of like bigots um in western um okay. societies who say like you know what you are like inferior and we're going to still treat you nicely but just accept that you're inferior you know what i mean like they're like they 
you know just no, because no, no. It, i mean this this uh, this guy said that he is a dalit actually i don't know i mean uh, this guy later on said that he is from a dalit community but says no, that hinduism doesn't that's taqiya on his that. part he's lying he's trying to make it believable <laughs> he's okay. saying taqiya so that is the okay. now, now he is saying that a brahmin or a kshatriya so actually i mean i am not reading the whole comment he is saying that a brahmin or a kshatriya is by the a kind of activities they do so since brahmins uh, i mean do this religion religious things and read religious scriptures so they actually uh go with the knowledge okay worship knowledge so for them the gyan yoga is there and uh, that is the chapter of knowledge so if they don't do that and they start doing devotion then they are actually not brahmins actually and so uh, and the for the kshatriya uh, the karma yoga is there the chapter of action is there so if they don't do it actually they are not the kshatriya so they are something else so basically he is going with this again, again the labor based division and all these things okay have you understood it yeah Yeah. Now, so he's trying to excuse uh, it as something that is not. He's trying to dis. He's trying to say this is not caste. This is something else. It's not based on. It's okay. not discrimination. It's just a. Uh, yeah. It's just yeah, categorizing yeah, yeah. people based on labor. He's trying to apologize. Yeah, but it's, my it's question like is why the. Women, hmm. The main question is why are women being included with that? Women can't be a labor-based division, right? That's a very good women point because you can't be a labor-based division. Why are women included with the lower caste? Like, but I mean, I mean, you are saying doctors. In, Engineers and women. I mean, does it make sense? Like, uh, obviously, this no, is something no. based on birth. Like, it is yeah. very clear from that. So he's trying to, like, he's trying to, like, do, like, like Islamic reformists who try to do gymnastic argument to say, like, oh, it's, it's not slave. They're servants, and it's just like, um, con- there's contract, and these are basically employ, just the same as employee at the time. They try to make slave in the Quran mean something else. To, like, that's that's how the Muslim reformers try to, like. misrepresent what the Quran is actually saying try to make it seem like every time the Quran is saying slave they actually mean like there's contract involved these are employees or something like that and these are the same, doing the same thing yeah, but you yeah. caught them because they're saying this is this is not caste this is not discrimination this is just a division of labor but in this in these categories they include women and like you're saying if this is division of labor what division of labor is woman <laughs> right so that's a yeah yep yeah, okay good you got them you got them all right let's continue So now, now, uh, now he is saying that now, now let me quote the full verse. You mischievously quoted only half the verse in translated form. You exclude. First of all, I didn't quote the verse only in the translated form. I quoted the original verse and I read it out. And another thing is half the verse in trans. And you and I didn't quote half the verse. I completed the full verse. And you excluded the part that everyone gets moksha if they do bhakti yoga. I said that. I said that thing. I mean, when did I miss that out? And then again, he is quoting the same verse. He is not quoting anything extra. You see, he is quoting the same thing again. I mean. He is not quoting anything extra, and then he says something like English transliteration and all he provides, and then finally he translates it as all those who take refuge in me, whatever their birth, race, sex, or caste, even those whom society scorns, will attain the supreme destination. So it is like an interpretation. I mean, I don't know who exactly gave this translation, but whoever gave this translation, this is more like an interpretation and not the exact word by word translation. Okay, so they are mm-hmm. saying the translation is like okay, everyone, irrespective of caste, race, sex, gender, everyone will. Uh, Uh, get me by doing devotion so it's like a very like how can i say interpreting the thing lo oh, what is the main idea behind that words maybe the, it, it, i can say that okay this may be the idea behind that words but this is not the word to word translation of that words okay so i can share the screen okay so then they are saying again something and then he is saying that i am a dalit by caste but brahmin by my knowledge i uh, okay then your translation is wrong again and again they are saying translation is wrong okay so this is another guy he is saying translation is wrong again he is providing that uh, uh yes again and now he is that the word which is sinful vajaya that sinful birth he is translating now as i, I don't know where from he is getting the translation he said that this means even those who are sex addicts hmm i mean uh, because the word is sinful vajaina so they took it as uh, sex addicts but this is not what religious scholars say most of the religious scholars will not translate the word papa yonaya as uh, sex addicts okay so this is just like so then he I said, like I like, I like i like the name i like the name sinful vagina i want to open a bar or a club and call it sinful oh vagina <laughs> sinful <laughs> sinful vagina, vagina. Okay. no you're gone so <laughs> do you uh, like, so like, he, oh my god <laughs> Right, so uh, so again you're he so, is asking me do you know so sanskrit innocent. or go ahead oh, sorry go so ahead. do you know sanskrit or just blabbering okay so he says that so now for them again i want to clarify one thing for hindutva knowing sanskrit 
is like authority over hinduism like sanskrit is the language this is very much like islam and christianity like okay there is hebrew and i mean not christianity christianity don't focus much on uh, language but especially islam which focuses much on the arabic but uh, for i mean hinduism also focuses on sanskrit i know hinduism has importance for sanskrit but there is local literature also there are local literature and everyone doesn't need to know the sanskrit uh, to be a hindu or something just talk about hinduism i mean i don't know i mean why they are so much like uh, like do you know sanskrit how dare you talk about hinduism without knowing sanskrit like i don't know i mean what kind of ideology is this, this? is very inter- again let, let me everything you're saying like there's com- like it's so comparable to islam uh, and it's funny because these people keep saying like oh armin you think like you're thinking about hinduism with your abrahamic background and that's why you don't understand it but then everything I, the more i learn about them the more i realize how similar they are to islam okay but, and and the arguments that muslims make because and a lot of Muslims tell you, like, if you agree with them, like, they have a lot of scholars that don't speak, like, um, you know, only 20% of um, Muslims speak Arabic, right? Uh, most Muslims mm-hmm. don't speak Arabic, right? That's not their language. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you agree with their position, it doesn't matter if you don't speak Arabic. They congratulate you, they celebrate mm-hmm. you, they call you an intellectual. But as soon as you disagree with them, they're like, well, you don't even speak Arabic. Right, so how could you know? You still, you have to read the text in the original Arabic form, and then even if you don't speak Arabic, and you show that the scholars that speak Arabic agree with you, that's not good enough. You have to speak the original language, and and even know, so if, even if you speak the, I mean, if you don't speak the original language, they will say that you are doing some propaganda, and actually you don't know. And things yeah, like yeah. That. So yeah, so even after, like sometimes they're like, oh, you don't speak Arabic, so you can't know, and then somebody says like, well, actually, I am an ex-Muslim Arab speaker. And then they ju- they keep moving the goalposts, but yeah, but they're very similar. But go ahead. Yeah. But this is like this is like true for him. I mean, I will say him, especially Hindutva. For I mean, normal Hindu people, this outrage is uh, not much there okay so i mean mm. i don't know but i think that uh, oh so you're saying that this people, is not that's not very common you're saying this is like unique not very common argument no 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 no. this is uh-huh. what you are saying this is very true for hindutva movement and the very certain uh-huh. section of the society who are this hindu nationalism idea is there but this mm-hmm. is not true for each and every hindus like uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for general hindus this may not be true okay Okay, okay. So they are not much, well, much focused say, on whether you speak. I mean, they have importance on Sanskrit, so, like, the, but but still, they are not so angry all the time. Like, okay, so they yeah. don't get offended <laughs> with the uh, so this kind of offending movement and boycott, boycott, boycott. This kind of movement is not. It's more of a Hindu thing. You're saying, okay, okay. Yeah. So then you then they are going on saying, do you know Sanskrit? Uh, Oh, so then I said them that I don't know Sanskrit, but I but I can understand some of the words, and I can clearly say the translation you are using is more like an interpretation than a word-to-word translation. Moreover, the translation I gave isn't my translation; it's by a religious scholar. Mm. So uh, then they say, then they are not actually highlighting. I mean, they are not answering my points that I raised. They are just blabbering nonsense. Like I don't mind any translation as long as the verse is translated completely in English. What do what do they mean? Like I also translated it completely. Copy paste the link of the translation you are using. If it is wrong, I will correct you. It is a shame that you have started the name calling after. What name calling did I do? What no, name calling did I do here? What the hell? It is a shame that you have started name calling. He name called me Takia. Uh, and uh, what yeah, that yeah. that was there half knowledge and etc etc uh, it is a shame that uh, name calling after getting exposed exposed on the very first the point hell? you made within three point, minutes into the video oh so oh okay God. I don't have a problem then I I'm just uh, uh, yeah. explaining it again and again then uh, they are saying some nonsense thing and I don't want to go to it okay and, oh, see, then then he's saying me. Then the religious scholar is wrong. What? Yeah. I mean, if the Only translation the... doesn't agree with you, then the religious yeah. scholar is wrong. What kind of yeah. thing is that? Then again, that very similar always... to Muslim. Again, guy, this is this is so similar with Muslims. Okay, like he a lot. Like, so you oh you read the Quran, you don't agree with me. You didn't read it in Arabic. Oh, you did read it. Uh, you did read it in Arabic. Well, you're not a scholar. Oh, yeah, you found scholars. Very much... No, wait. Let me let me fin- let me finish this. Okay, this is how the steps work. Okay, you say that 
let me go from the beginning again. Okay. So, well, you read this Quran. You read the Quran. You disagree with me. Okay. You should. You didn't read it in the original Arabic. So that's why you're wrong. Oh, you did understand it in Arabic, um, or you found somebody that speaks Arabic that has the same interpretation. Well, you're not that person, or you are not. Is not a scholar. You have to actually look at scholars. Or oh, you actually found a scholar that speaks Arabic and that agrees with your position. Well, no, that scholar is wrong. The scholars that I tell you that are, if the scholar disagrees with my position, then that's yeah. not the right scholar that you have to go to. Again, these are the steps. The steps that they take. It's very similar. But Katie, Katie, can you respond to Katie here? I agree that regular Hindu people are not this outrageous and they would still be upset and call you immoral. I mean, yeah, they call, I mean, for what they will call you immoral? Like, uh, it depends on, like, yeah. I mean, yes, for like, for uh, sexy everyone, Kali. anyone doesn't get, I mean, if you show now this sexy Kali, suppose, if you just come to and come and show it to some regular Hindu, I mean, obviously they won't like it. I mean, definitely they won't like it. But uh, yeah, but will they go to file an FIR against you? Like, I don't know. Like, this I don't know. <laughs> obviously, they won't like but, it. Like, if you show this to my parents also, they won't like it. But will they take the step of, like, going to some FIR and, I mean, all these kind of, like, a if, you mean, if, 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 you're talking about if I you're filing a police report against me. That's what you're saying. FIR, right? Yeah, yeah. First information yeah. report. So the Fair filing sense. filing cases against the person, harassing that person online, bullying. Right. I mean, obviously they won't do that. I'm talking about right. that. I'm well, not Katie's... saying that they won't be offended, but that. The, right. I mean, I can get offended with anything. Like th that's a different right. issue. If right. someone, uh, I mean. Uh, someone makes some homophobic joke. I may get offended with that. Like, why are you, yeah. I mean, demeaning the LGBTQ community? But does that mean that I will go and file ca cases against them? Like, and then I will harass them online? I mean, that is not necessary, mm. right? I mean, someone so has the right to be homophobic. So it sounds, they, they well, sounds, so that, sounds like you're agreeing with Katie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. agreeing with Katie. But they, they, okay. they are not that outrageous. But yes, they, they will, I mean, they will not like it. But yeah, yeah. they're right. not outrageous. Cool. So, so then they are saying something like, you can show me any... Achha. So again and again, they are making the same point that the caste system is not there. I mean, they are not... Then I shared the links also, which are very reputed sites, like government sites, actually, government websites of the text. I'm sharing these links there. These translations are given. And uh, then they are saying something, okay. Then uh, and, and then it goes on and then uh, and like this, it goes on back and forth, back and forth, like Sanskrit, Sanskrit and all this. You are then in, the, in between he told that you are misguiding the audience. And finally, the final comment. And then he was saying that you haven't read the Gita. So I, I said that I had read the Gita when I was a child, again, when I was a teenager, again, when I became an adult. And I mean, how <laughs> are you that I haven't read the Gita? I don't know. Like uh, and then finally, like. Uh, yes, see, finally it comes to after all this discussion, it comes to these things. Fine, you are free to free not to consider Bhagavad Gita as the word. No, like it comes to uh, another thing. It the was word there. Uh, he said, you're All free I'm to... saying is that the Bhagavad, see, all I'm saying is that the Bhagavad Gita being the word of God simply cannot be unfair to the devotee. So everything mm. comes to considering the Bhagavad Gita <sighs> to be a word of God. As oh, that is wow. not the nature of God. So that this is not a logical explanation. If it seems so, then the, I have to see if my interpretation is correct. I don't know. This so is so crazy. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. This is so Islamic and Christian. This is so Abrahamic. Wait, so the Bible can the Bible cannot yeah, yeah, be wrong. Yeah. Why cannot the Bible be wrong? Because it's the word of God. Why? Well, How do you know there is a word of God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's so similar. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> They accuse others of Abrahamic lens. Okay. So yeah. now it goes on and on. I mean, after some more discussion, finally it comes to uh, this one. There is nothing, see this one, there is nothing wrong with the caste system. The problem is only with humans. So consider one caste superior to the other. Each soul takes rebirth to experience the world in a different way. Some want to experience it intellectually, some physically. Now if I have come here to sing and dance and play, how can you force my soul to go and study? I mean, the, the see the end of the discussion happens at the justification of the caste system. I mean, this is so ridiculous. Like it started with no caste system doesn't exist. It ends with no caste system is not wrong. 
I mean, wow. <laughs> this is itself so ridiculous. The, the mask, <laughs> the mask one. slips, the mask <laughs> slips. <laughs> I find that so hypocritical. I mean, the discussion starts with caste system is not there, and then mm. it ends with caste system is not wrong. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> when you corner them into a position, so they have to uh, admit it. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Now we will go to the okay. Okay, so now let us uh, continue. So now let us continue. We have twenty minutes time. Uh, so we will continue to the story Wait. of. So uh, do you remember the story? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the Hindu for... people are so similar to the people they hate and find disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, so, can you give us a short summary, like really short summary of where we are with the story? Story time. Okay, so do you remember anything? So from the last that that I said, the, the, there, there is a text called Devi Mahatmya, so it has three sections: uh, Madhu okay. Kaitava Vadha, Mahisha Asura Vadha, and Shumha Nishumba Vadha. So we discussed the first two parts in the previous video. So do you remember what happens in the first part, Madhu Kaitava Vadha? No, you have to remind me. I'm sorry, these names are so hard so to remember. So there, there is a so in the Madhu Kaitava Vadha, what happens that Vishnu was sleeping, and uh, it is a summary. So Vishnu was sleeping, and some demons uh, pop out from the uh ear dirt of vishnu and since vishnu uh-huh. was sleeping he was just sleeping so brahma uh got afraid i mean they are going to attack him so he started praising the sleep goddess the yoga nidra that is the sleep goddess or sleep so to come out of vishnu so that vishnu can awake and kill the demons and uh, and hence the sleep goddess responds to her, to his prayer and withdraws herself from vishnu and then vishnu uh, i mean wakes up and kills the demons so in this sense and then brahma could only create the universe so basically uh, the yoga maya yoga nidra that is the sleep goddess acts as a prime mover so i mean she doesn't mm. kill the demons directly but she acts as the prime mover so and the next part is the mahishasura vadha i don't know why the, this reminds uh, this reminds me of adventure time with the t- with the time guy sleeping and having to dream the universe or something like that i don't know there's an episode in adventure time exactly okay. like this but go so some some <laughs> some people uh, interpret it as like some people interpret it as like so the world i mean makes sense to you only when you wake up your consciousness mm. makes sense of the world so this is the metaphorical interpretation with if you are sleeping you the world does not exist it i mean when you only when you wake up the world is created and okay so okay so then the next part is the mahishasura That's the gita yeah yeah so devi mahatmya is one of the same level as the gita for most of the bengali hindus yeah exactly so it is mm-hmm. recited in the worshiping worshiping places many of the times it is recited so uh, the mahishasura vadha is the second part of the story where what happens that mahishasura is an asura he captures the land of the devas the swarga loka that is the heavens and what happens he just turns them away and what happens is that they all gather together and their fury the fury of all of them the enrage every everything comes together and the bright light comes together and this forms a goddess like figure and that goddess then finally fights with mahishasura and kill same so mahishasura is a shape shifting demon he shapes shifts to different animals time and again and finally mm-hmm. he is uh, like uh, finally the goddess is able to kill him so this is again an interesting thing like in this story in the original story there is no mention of any boon that mahishasura gets mahishasura just captures the demons the goddess kills mahishasura okay so this is a very plain story but in the popular culture when they show it in tvs or just like uh, oral stories when they say they will add another thing with the story that mahishasura by doing some penance and all got a boon that no man can kill him and only a woman can kill him a so what? this is a like bone? to justify that why and the boon boon uh do you know what is a boon means b o o n huh you know e... like blessings boon oh okay okay i have to look it up okay wait how do you spell it again boon is like a like So boon is like uh, something you get. I mean, uh, how can I say? I mean, you ask for something from the gods, and the gods give you something that is a boon. Okay. Okay. All right. So after doing some penance and all, he gets a boon so that he can't be killed by a man. So he should be killed by a woman only. And finally, the woman is created. Okay. 
so this story actually justifies the i mean in some sense it it seems like the power of a woman on the other hand they are also justifying like why the gods can't kill him like the gods are powerful but why they can't kill him themselves like why the goddess is required in the first place so in a patriarchal society that needs to be justified and hence they are making up additional parts to justify that oh why the this is the goddess this is, is like the so movie no man like can kill him. this is like the wonder woman movie where where when they made wonder woman to, as a weapon against the evil against the god of war right yeah yeah so such, a, such a theme is also there in lord of the rings hmm yeah. such a theme is also there in the lord of the rings because there was a woman who killed a shadow monster kind of thing yeah hmm. so we will oh, talk about the third part go ahead. it's the opposite of course yeah so shumbha nishumbha is a uh, Okay, so the third part is Shumha Nishumha Vadha. So again, the same thing happens. Shumha Nishumha are two brothers. They capture the land of the devas. The devas are turned out. They go to the Himalaya mountains, and they start uh, worshiping the goddess. As I have told in the earlier video, that the goddess who resides in the form of intelligence, sleep, hunger, etc., like abstract qualities among all human beings, that goddess we worship. That goddess to come to our rescue. So it is like an abstract goddess. Okay, abstract concept. So now the Parvati. Parvati is a literally means woman of the mountains so she is passing by okay so uh, to bathe in the waters of the ganga and she asks like who are you worshiping so and at that time from her body a bright light comes out okay and separates out and that takes the form of another goddess that is the kaushiki so, so she is fair complexioned and uh, she is kaushiki and the original parvati becomes dark complexioned so, so she is the kalika so that is the black goddess okay so she so the kalika goes to the mountains and stays there okay so she is the benevolent kali okay so she is the uh, smiling kali or benevolent kali that you see okay sometimes so that, that i think the inspiration comes from there the benevolent kali so she goes and sits on the top of the mountain the dark kalika there is parvati basically now the kaushiki that comes out uh yeah yeah so kaushiki goes and like uh, she is just sitting at some place and chanda and mun uh, yeah chanda and munda these are uh, two asuras uh, who are like asura I mean, asura means demons right i just I mean, for the people you who can don't take know. it in that sense it doesn't exactly mean demons but it you can take it in that sense it is a rivalry of the devas okay so these are two groups so uh, so the chanda and munda are enamored to see kaushiki's beauty so they, they just go and see kaushiki and they are enamored and they say that and and they go to shumbha and nishumbha and say that oh you shumbha and nishumbha see you possess everything you possess the heavens and everything so you should possess that lady also she is also like a jewel so you should possess her okay so uh, i mean why is she still not possessed and then uh, shumbha and nishumbha send a messenger to Sug a messenger called sugriva to kaushiki and uh, and he goes and asks her like okay i mean he, i mean shumbha and nishumbha are asking you to marry one of them so she says that okay but i i have a vow i have already taken a vow that i will marry only the one uh, who has defeated me in battle so so i mean they say like uh, what are you talking about like but they say that oh i know that i mean but what to do i like i i have taken already this vow tell them tell your masters like shumbha nishumbha that i have already taken this vow so shumbha nishumbha after hearing this get enraged and then they uh, sent a person and sent a asura called dhumra lochana with all his armies and all to bring her to bring uh, kaushiki the goddess uh, distressed and dragged by hair like i mean if she doesn't agree to marry then just drag her by hair and bring her so Wait, and see the word again and again they're saying the word like possessing her and all so this is like very uh, like in modern rendition again they will say that uh, shumbha and nishumbha went and asked parvati like uh, will uh, will they marry her and parvati just got enraged and then fought with them and just killed them this is the modern oral retelling of the story or in the television shows also like this is actually somehow wrong because this is the crime of shumbha and nishumbha is not that they wanted to marry parvati this is not the crime for which they were killed Uh, i mean they will be killed at the end so and i mean some people called you also shumbha nishumbha like oh shumbha nishumbha also told that kali is sexy so they faced the wrath of the goddess 
but the point here is that they wanted to possess her they wanted to treat her like a slave or some kind like they wanted to drag her by hair and possess her and i mean that is a different thing okay so that wait, is not exactly so, like marrying wait so are, so is this a, is are, is this scripture justifying uh, rape can you say that no it is not justifying it is condemning it is condemning the thing wait so it's i don't understand Sorry, who was do that oh okay Oh, the Asuras were trying to do that. Asuras are trying to do that to do that to her, but she kills. She finally ends up killing them because they tried to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Sorry. I lost the plot for a second. It was getting yeah. too many elements. We need a chart. You need to have like a chart, like visuals. So I have the Asuras on one side, the Divas on one side. Because there's so many names, I keep like losing like who's who in this in the story. I was like. Who are the the good? So the bad okay, guys okay. were trying to ra so who are the the demons. This called, Asuras are demons, and yeah. Parvati is a goddess, so, a okay, good for person. For convenience, I will say that. Uh, okay, for your convenience, I will say Asuras as demons then. Okay, if you can't remember yeah. the name, <laughs> but but there are <laughs> no, specific no. names of the Asuras also, like Dhumra, Lochana, and all these. Okay, good. Okay, okay good. So then the. Uh, so then wait, Dhumra why did Lochana they change the story? Then, then why did they change the story in the modern? in the modern if the if if the de if the evil if the evil asuras yeah, were trying yeah, yeah. to the, yeah if, sometimes i mean this is a good i mean that. this is a good story the, the asuras were trying to yeah, yeah. rape a, a hindu goddess and she destroyed them so why don't they why do they keep that story that's like a positive message i also assume yeah, yeah, that yeah, this is bad because you said they changed it, it hmm no, 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 no. They, they, they changed it because they want to make it more sensitive. Like uh, just asking some girl to marry, or just asking to, I mean, just getting sexually attracted to a woman itself becomes a crime. Like I'm saying, uh, the offense becomes okay, like, okay. a bit lesser. All right. Like not the, oh. uh, not the att attempt at dragging her by hair and possessing her, but just finding her sexually attractive becomes a crime. So that is. What I like okay, okay. I finally like, get it. Because I thought, like, I thought that this must be justifying rape if they're changing the story and they're trying to not to be embarrassed. No, 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 no. But no, 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 what they're definitely. doing is that they're making just a mere attraction to a goddess. They're trying to make that as an evil thing that deserves her killing them. Not just them trying to rape her, but just the fact that they even consider. Wait, what? These modern renditions, like, what? How recent are these changes? Because it must be very recent. Because Hinduism in, in a popular culture, in TV channels, in TV channels and all. Mm. I think in the TV channel, another reason can be that they don't want to show the violence and all these things. Like they, because the children are watching them and they don't want to show this, like uh, all these violent dialogues, like drag her by hair and all these like violent things. Like I want to possess her and all. This. So that's why they tone down it a little bit. Maybe that may be another reason. I don't know. These these are in popular culture like TVs and all comics for children. Okay, so that's very sex negative. They're just against sexuality as a whole. Just finding a goddess yeah, yeah. attractive. I, mean, I can understand that for children. I mean, I can understand that for children. They are. I mean, uh, I mean, removing these things, but still, like it, it, it in, imbibes in the mind a kind of sex sex negativity in some sense. I mean, right. because you are that's turning a sexual sick. violence into just a sexual attraction. That is, I mean, that is what they are doing. But by the way, people so, in the live chat, so, if you if people in the live chat keep commenting things that are not relevant to what we're saying, I'm gonna block you guys. Okay, uh, Hossein and Hossein Hamid, anybody else? If you're not like, if you if you keep distracting me, part of the reason why I keep missing your points is because I'm getting distracted by irrelevant points in the live chat. Okay, so I will remove you guys. If, but Katie is asking good questions. This Ranak agree that Durga Puja is so much fun because even though it still has religious significance, it is mostly secular festival in Bengal. I think so. I think so. See, it is so much fun. It, it is a secular festival. I mean, everyone enjoys. Everyone just uh, goes out in the puja pandals. This is called pandal hopping. Like they go to each pandal to see the decorations, to see the how the goddess is adorned with jewelries and sari, and I mean how the idol is. I mean, sometimes there are certain themes in the idol like uh, this, this is a very artistic thing in bengal that happens like this year right. there was an idol which was made like durga was imagined in the form of a migrant laborer mother okay so th right. there was a migrant laborer woman who is carrying her child in her hand and she was having like this 10 hands so it is like and with her there are two daughters also so it is like very creative art we, we get to see in the pandals of bengal when we go to durga puja it's not like religious i mean completely religious it is a, like whole lot of things that there 
All right, let me just speak to the people who are speaking Persian in this channel. Guys, do, do, uh, don't speak Persian on this channel. We have Jomhuriya Bi Khodayan if you want to speak Farsi. We already have a channel for that. That's Go and find Jomhuriya Bi Khodayan. That's where I speak Farsi. This, this channel is only English, okay? Please don't distract me with your Persian stuff. Okay, but go on. Okay. Okay, so now uh, she goes and Dhumda Lochana. So we were at... Huh, okay. So yes, yes. Thank you, Katie. Okay. So Shumha uh, Nishumha. Okay, so Dhumra Lochana. Don't worry, don't so, worry. Dhumra Lochana is the name of the Asur. Okay, so Dhumra Lochana is the Asura that was sent initially. So he, he goes and says that, okay, I have to take you. I, I mean, will you come willingly or uh, we should take you dragging by here? So she says that, okay, I'm a lone woman. What can I do? Do whatever you want. So as he approaches, like the goddess makes a sound like, oh, sound, something like that. And Dhumra Lochan gets reduced to dust with that sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the lion of the goddess, with the goddess, there is a lion, pet lion. So that goes and kills all the army of whatever the army was. Then uh, next, Shumha Nishumha sent Chanda Munda, then said that, okay, so if she is not again, first wound her and then drag her by here and bring to us and bind her, drag her, bind her and uh, then bring to us and wound her if it is necessary, if she is not agreeing. Then they go and try to do the same. Then from her forehead with the fury, the Kali comes, the I mean, uh, dark skinned, I mean, goddess comes out. So that is the furious Kali. So there was the one Kali who remained in the Himalaya mountains. That is the benevolent Kali. And another Kali comes in the battlefield out of the forehead. That is the furious Kali. So there are, there are two different Kalis. So this Kali, what, what she does. So here are certain things she held in his hand. So sword, noose, skull topped stuff, garland of skulls, tiger skin, gaping mouth tongue lolling out, red eyes, these are the descriptions. So she is lolling out the tongue like, ah, and then like the, she's wearing a tiger skin, garland of skulls and having all these kind of skull topped stuff and all these things. She's a terrible, I mean, she's very fierce. So there's two fierce Kellys? Fierce. She's very fierce. Kelly? Yeah, they're Holy the same, God. but like there are two forms of the one. One Kali is the one who comes out in the battlefield and another mm -hmm. Kali is one who remains in the mountain after the bright skinned goddess comes out of her. Mm -hmm. So as I told in the beginning of the story, so she remains okay. in the mountain, Parvati Kali's. Okay? Do you think it's kind of disturbing? Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. So the light skinned goddesses are benevolent and the dark skinned goddesses are aggressive? I told the reverse thing actually. <laughs> Oh, wait. No, you I said Kali. Isn't Kali... Okay. The one in Himalaya. No, no, no. no. Initially, there was a goddess. Initially, there was a dark-skinned goddess. From her, a fair-skinned goddess comes. She was benevolent, the dark-skinned one. She remains in the top of the uh, mountain. Okay. The fair-skinned okay, goddess okay. comes. And from that fair skin, another dark-skinned goddess comes. She is the angry one. <laughs> so it's like inception. Oh. Dark, fair, dark. Okay, so, so it's, like it could be whether you're dark or uh, light, it doesn't matter. You could either be benevolent. Yeah, here or, the dark I and I mean here the dark and fair may be indicating some metaphorical themes. I'm not sure. So what the is goddess it? is also in power. What is, there it is a Sanskrit word? Huh. It it represents yes, the dark always represents something bad, but uh, it is actually represent the three gunas in uh, Sanskrit. So this is called the Sattva, Raja and Tamaguna. Sattva is the like the pure uh, Guna means like a kind of a feeling or something like that. I mean, I'm, I can't exactly translate this word. It's a, like a... So, sattva means a sattvic feelings means like kind of a purity or something like that. Sattvic. Then there is a rajasik, that is raja guna. That means the... Uh, that comes from the word raja means king. So, that is the kingly feelings, okay? And then it's a tamaguna, that is a tamasic feeling. That is a dark feelings. That is the dark attributes of a person. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Dark attributes so, may be meat eating, sex, alcohol, everything. So the goddess is associated with the tamaguna when she is dark. But it is also, I mean, giving the importance on the tamaguna. Like how the tamaguna is also important in some sense for the destruction. Okay, the sorry. Universe. Like, okay, first the of all, okay, so the, violence and the, everything. The, way, the reason why I said it was the opposite is because Kelly, I know, like, she's like a war, like a... She's like and more very of a, aggressive. This is also a kind of racism. 
you know like this is when they sometimes describe the goddess as blue like neel but this is just a metaphorical description they say that neel but actually they mean to say dark they neel doesn't mean literally blue they actually want to say dark okay but in a modern renditions you will always see like goddess is painted blue because they are so uncomfortable with black goddesses actually so this is they don't uh, like the black skin so that, that has been going on so that's I mean, since the colonial era you know yeah yeah since the right. colonial era or krishna you will also see that the word krishna literally means black but he will yeah. always be uh, painted in blue because uh, black skin is sometimes uh, is like okay so how can the god be black like uh, that there is a negative thing in that wow. so hence they will paint krishna also All right. in blue but can so, can, yeah. can i just ask this question because you said like you said the opposite and the aggressive ones are not black but kali was supposed to be dark skin and she's like a war here like a war goddess right and she's very aggressive so she's dark and she's yeah. very aggressive that that's yeah. what but yeah. you're saying maybe it's not related at all like maybe like um they could be benevolent and dark skin or very aggressive and dark skin yeah but sometimes but, sometimes it is not related yeah there are multiple now see the uh, sometimes the dark skin is also seen as attractive like krishna krishna you know about krishna so krishna the word mm. means itself black so he is seen as an attractive god so it is not only about mm. the war or destructive nature but he is like an attractive person also so similarly there kali is also sometimes seen as an attractive i mean not attractive to us but uh, attractive to shiva her husband so she is also seen with sexuality and all that is also i mean a part of that so yeah so mm. but, i mean it's but not then you mentioned i mean, I mean I but then you you talked about dark feelings and ha is that any way related to their color yeah and it, it it is related because the goddess is also called three varna so it means tricolored so she has three manifest three different colored manifestations the one is the shukla that is means white so she is white skin another one is the uh, gaura that is uh, fair skin fair means like yellow skin like like yours you are not white but like a fair mm -hmm. complexion another one is their krishna so that krishna so that is the dark skin so she has three manifestations so these three but, represent three things the white represents sattva the fair complexion represents raja that is the kingly things and the dark represents the dark things that is the tamasic things the tamaguna what are, what are dark things now it uh, i mean these are i mean i can't exactly say what are dark things as i have said violence sex uh, alcohol uh me okay non vegetarianism all these so then that, what i was saying originally no, is correct then are done yeah. in, okay, all these things are all all these things are associated with kali in fact in tantric practices all these things are there actually um animal sacrifices everything these here. are considered dark things animal sacrifices and all okay so then then I, what i was saying originally was the correct them because that means that they're associating dark skin with violence uh no they are associating dark skin with darkness now this is like uh, and then darkness race, but this is no yeah, but then you, okay i'm not saying anything i'm just, but, I'm just or at least colorist this is colorist but the point is like they didn't think like that they were thinking like uh okay like uh how can i say they were thinking like so this is dark this is like they're just associating the colors with different kind of like themes like okay when when i say like this is a dark era we say like this this is english speaking like this is a dark era we say so is it racist like we are uh, using the word dark no. to mean something bad so is it racist okay so, no, like let me let me explain myself okay no it's not racist to say that this was a dark era but if you go three three levels they say like oh these ideas are dark okay and these guys have these ideas and that's why their color skin is dark now you've gone beyond just saying these ideas are dark you're now made a three you pinpointed dark ideas with the dark skin you connected dark skin but with dark ideas these goddesses, are, these goddesses are not human beings so they so, have multiple uh, hands they have like very yes. weird kind of imagery okay, so they're so personifications so, but uh their personal so but they are not okay so let me let, let me explain to you let me explain to you okay but uh, the way i'm thinking okay it's not colorist to say the dark ages oh these were the dark ages okay that's not colorist right but it would be colorist if i say the dark i'm going to represent the renaissance in europe the eight the light 
that the Renaissance brought. The fair the skinned woman and the that with the, the fair skinned skin woman. woman with the fair skinned woman, and I'm yeah, going to yeah. represent the dark ages in Europe with a black skinned yeah. woman. Okay, so even if these representations are not real figures, I'm just like showing. Oh, the Renaissance, the Age of Enlightenment, light, fair skinned white woman. The Dark Ages in Europe. I'm going to use a black woman as a symbol for the Dark Ages in Europe. Now we've gone beyond. Even if these characters are fictional, I think you can see the problem here, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying. I'm just but guessing. Here, I, yeah, but go, here, yeah, go. but here, I think that the problem is uh, much less because they are not saying that Kali is a negative entity. The, she is the mother mm. goddess. So you are representing the mother goddess as dark. I mean, yes, I like. This can have metaphorical representations, but on the other hand, this is the mother goddess, and hence I don't think. And this is the we are worshiping the mother goddess as a dark skin goddess. I understand. I understand and, that they don't hence see I it think as that negative. This is not that colorist. I and, understand and in that. Fact, there are other like sexually attractive women in uh, in the Mahabharata and other texts also who are described as dark complexion. So I don't think that they were uh, ancient Indians were that much colorist in nature. I don't yeah, think. Like, I don't. I, think that I don't. Rich, more recently. Yeah. I don't think they intentionally wanted to make it seem like as it, as if to say dark skin it was bad, okay? Because I don't think they saw as ex being extremely violent as bad, okay? They celebrated mm -hmm. Kali's violence, right? But what yeah. I'm saying is that for us who see benevolence being better than violence and then associating dark skin with violence, maybe they weren't seeing it as negative thing. You're like, yeah, dark skin and violence go hand in hand, and great, we love the violence of Kelly, right? But again, even just associating dark skin with violence and been, and yeah. a good idea, you know, more other ideas with white skin. I just, I, I'm not saying their their intentions were bad. I'm just saying the result could be like, the result could be bad. You know what I mean? But anyways, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes yeah. they describe the yeah you are right in some sense that they, they describe the violent goddesses as dark complexion and uh, I mean more benevolent goddesses as fair complexion. But on the other hand, sometimes as I have told you, sometimes uh, in early descriptions you can find that Parvati is also described as dark complexion. She is a benevolent goddess, but she is also described as dark complexion. So sometimes uh, benevolent women are also described as dark complexion in the text in mm -hmm. some texts. Okay. Okay? okay, it's just something to explore. Okay, yeah. so uh, we don't have much time, so we I will. Uh, okay, so I was where? Oh, Chanda and Munda. So, uh, so the Kali, the dark goddess, comes out of her, and she has all this violent imagery, and she is taking out the tongue, and then she like uh, she goes and uh, take. I mean, trample the all the army just by her foot. She devours okay. them, grinds their teeth, and then like elephants, horses, chariots. Am I connected still? Yeah, you yeah. are, but you're cutting in so and out. Chariot. So cut. Yeah. Okay. Go in. Go through it fast Hello. so that we can end. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Fast. Maybe turn off. Where you actually? Okay, let's just end this okay. here, because we're at the end of our time. So you're, we're cutting in. Your and your connection. Yeah. Uh, Katie is saying Renek is very um, roboty. So maybe this is a good place to cut it, and we could come back. Oop! We could just completely cut out then now. All right. Um, let me see. Suji is saying, "Dark age means Kali Yuga." I think Armin is right, but don't know. Even Hindus don't know what it is uh, right. I mean, meaning what the, what the right meaning is. Maybe, yeah, we maybe I don't know. Um, the the echo was not my fault. The echo was because of his system. So you see, right now I have zero echo, right? Because yeah. Uh, uh, Katie saying, "Okay, I really like this guy for the most part." Oh, here he's back. Oh, let me go. Um, let me just quickly read this. Katie saying, "Okay, I really like this guy for the most part. My first disagreement would be that he seems what, to be what, what, for uh, reformation. Uh, yeah, for reformation. While I am against it, he feels like a Hindu version of Imam Tawhid. All right, go on, continue. Let, let's try, do it really fast. Okay, okay. Do final remarks. Okay, okay. Uh, can I get fifteen minutes? I mean, because no. this story will end in fifteen minutes." Uh, this story uh, will end in just 15 minutes, please, please. Uh, because this is, uh, I don't want to continue it because this is just half a story. Okay. I mean, this is just going okay. to end now very soon. So anyway, so, so the Kali comes, the enraged goddess comes and uh, devours and chews and everything. She, she does all these violent things. And finally, she brings the heads of the two Chanda and Munda uh, with her and gives the original fair-skinned goddess, the Kaushiki. And, uh, and hence, Kaushiki names her Chamunda. 
so she is the she names her chamunda okay because she brings the heads of chanda and munda to him then all the like uh, then there is a mention to the sapta matrika there is a seven mothers so what happens that the other gods who are there some goddesses comes out of them so taking their form like whatever the attributes of the god is it is just like a female version of that god and they come to ally with her like uh, ally her assist her in uh, assist her in what can i say this this battle and the seven mother goddesses come mm-hmm. and all of them like fight again and all these things happen okay and then finally there is a demon called rakta bija which comes rakta bija means blood seeded so this demon is a special kind like uh, when a blood drops on the soil from that a clone oh, yeah. develops i remember that guy okay so so first of all they try to kill uh, kill him but soon Kelly an army and- of clones Ke- Clones, yeah. uh, every time you attack crazy, him, he right? bleeds. Every time you attack him, he bleeds, yeah, and yeah, then a whole yeah. bunch of clothes. And the whole But Kelly blood, comes, yeah. and Kelly comes, and she swipes the blood with her tongue from the ground, and she like so she she he doesn't yeah yeah. Then Kali out. like starts drinking with all the blood with her yeah. tongue, and uh, then what happens is that due to the blood loss and striking of the weapons, like finally he dies. and the all the seven mother goddesses and all the Kali and what the original goddess Kaushiki, so everyone dies. on with joy in all right you're getting robotty sick rona you getting robotty it with with blood you get it you're getting robotty so guys you're getting robotty for you guys as well and okay yeah you're getting robotty so th- then rona the you're getting then really then should finally come rona... themselves with their armies you're getting very robotty i'm getting again lost yeah so we have to cut it here Let's come back to this. I'm not this sure. Is... Yep, you're getting so robot. Your connection is bad. Yeah, am I visible now? You you are cutting in and out and people see yes, he was roboty like really bad connection. Okay. Let's cut this here because your connection is bad. This is an exciting part to ca- uh, to catch up on later, okay? Next time because your connection is not good. Not my fault. But um This Kelly part is my favorite part of the story. Guys, it's really hard to follow the plot here. There's too many moving characters. You know how people complain about Game of Thrones that there's just too many elements and some people get confused? Well, at least with Game of Thrones, there's like charts. Oh my god. I need a chart. I need to chart me I need a chart to make sense of all of the story. I'm not going to be able to like it's just too many moving parts. Oh look, his connection is so bad he's not even going to be able to come. There's too many moving parts. You can't just like know exactly who's who and what did what, you know? There needs to be like animation. Oh, Katie saying I know how he feels because the story of the Devi uh, Devi Mahatma is almost towards the end. Yeah, okay, but that's a good cliffhanger. Just leave it as a cliffhanger. Look, he can't even look, you guys see? It's like going woo like you can't join. Like you can see the swirly thing, right? He's not going to be able, his, his connection is bad. It's not even bringing him up. Yeah, but Katie, uh, okay. Um Katie, um you could tell us the story. No, never mind. I'm not going to read it. Oh, look at this. <laughs> you know, uh, hold on. Hussein. Oh, where's comment? Hussein's comment is going to show up soon so I can highlight. Yeah, we just Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm the John Snow in this story. I don't know anything. I like the, the these stories, like think about think about it, guys. If this becomes a movie, How epic is that? Like you have the you have like the enemy and Kelly is attacking her and he's bleeding and the blood drops. Like I I'm imagining the Hollywood version of this and it looks so epic in my mind. Like the way I'm imagining these mythologies like in in like the way like these demons and these goddesses, they look so much better than the Indian arts that I see like in in a like in a cinematic version of them. Like how badass these asuras could look. and the blood like drips on the ground and the blood like whoever came up with this this specific story just by itself is more epic than anything i've read in the quran right like your goddess is attacking this guy and 
this is his blood when his blood touch any drop that touches the ground turns into a clone version of him like that is, imagine the things that you could do with that imagery Ronak, we have to end this here because your connection is not that yeah, good yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This actually, actually, Armin, uh, Armin, let me tell you one thing. There is only one line remaining in the story, so I don't want to okay. continue it. So what happens at the end is Shumbha Nishumbha uh, comes themselves, and then finally again terrific battle happens. Nishumbha gets killed, and finally Shumbha uh, Shumbha says that okay, but you are fighting in groups. You are so many of you are fighting against me. So you are fighting in groups. You are resorting to others' power. You are not fighting alone. But then she says that okay, all of them are. Uh, me only i am only all of them so and all of them combined together to form one single goddess all the mother goddesses kali and everything together they combine together and form one goddess and then finally they kill uh, the shumbha and finally they, shumbha. this ends and the gods again get their land back so this is the ending story, ending story yes. hooray happy ending I... <laughs> But yeah, thank you. Katie, Katie is saying, I know many moderate Hindus who hate the Hindutva simply because the Hindutva is preventing Western media from adapting their mythology. They should le- see the, they should learn from the Japanese. The Japanese love it when Western media and takes their mythology and turns it into movies, right? I think if they, if India, yeah, yeah. so if, po- if the Western media makes, uh, I mean, uh, some series on, I mean, mythology, then they will be so offended. Oh my God. Like they won't allow it in the country. Like They should be honored. They should be so and, happy. And you that... know, there was, a, there was a Ramayana series. Like, I think you should watch that. Uh, that was an anime, basically. The yeah, anime Ramayana. Okay. I think you, I don't know if you have seen that. That is a very beautiful one. Okay. There, there is no mockery or anything. Yeah, the Japanese money. It, it's a very beautiful one. Like I saw it in childhood. It, it was Hindi dubbed, but uh, and it was so beautiful. Okay, there was many. There was a faction of the society that was so offended with this. That, that how can a Japanese guy make a Ramayan? And then they banned it from the country, and all these things happened. I, I don't know. Like what kind of logic is that? Why can't a Japanese guy make a Ramayan? I don't know. Mm. Kirti is saying the Hindutva recently attacked the manga for adapting Shiva and Durga Kelly. And well, we're gonna make we're gonna make our own version of these uh, as well. Atheist. By the way, guys, we're gonna ha- we have our own version of art coming. A lot of it. So support us on Patreon. We, the, your you know once we hit two hundred patrons, we're gonna have our own art like once every week. Okay, cool. Um, all right, cool. F- finally, your connection got better at the end, so you could manage to finish the story. Yeah. Is there more? Is there like a chart that I could refer to so I could know exactly which god is where and which battle happened at what time and who which god was came? There needs <laughs> to be a chart. chart like, like you see, like I have for to create that then. See a lot okay, of people so can. If you want to, if you want to see a philosophical image, then I can show you one form of a goddess. This is I'm not going no, to no, discuss no. That's much not about what I want. the origins. No, see, like a lot of people were complaining about Game of Thrones about there's too many Im- characters. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard to keep track. Okay, but I don't. Know. But I don't but then there was characters. there's maps, there's charts. You can see how everyone is related. You can see people's previous history. A religion as old as Hinduism, what, like how how is it that charts so easily for people to refer to doesn't yet exist? Like we should like yeah. make that. We should Atheist Republic should make a chart like that and make it available. Yeah, but can yeah can we can we do what do you think, Rona? Can we make a chart like that and then refer to it and then that way like it's yeah we can refer to refer to it in some cases like what you want exactly that is important what I mean for what purpose the chart I mean so which god came to for example the Deva Deva Devi Mahatmya chart we can make yeah so here's the thing the chart should the chart should know show which god come from one god and how the the creation story of each god and how they're connected right. And then right yeah. next to each line, there needs to be the Vedas or the Gita or whatever the story comes from, like the scripture, yeah, right? And then there. also the battles and the stories that they're involved in. You know, there, mm. there should be a website but like eventually thing, that is interactive. Hinduism, yeah, one thing in Hinduism is that you can't connect all the books. Like uh, this is again told, like suppose, suppose the, in Bible, there are four Gospels, you know, right? So you mm-hmm. can't connect all the four gospels to form one gospel because the four gospel stories are slightly different. And in yeah. India, like there are several books and all of them tell different stories. You can't, I mean, if you combine them, it will become, con- I mean, it will be full of contradictions because these are different stories, actually. The same. That, that's why you need more. That's why you need charts because without like, because that would be it's so complicated that with a charts like th- that, you could like see like based on this, I mean, this, is, like, this you have book, 
it is told like this, but in this book it is told like that. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it would be on the chart. Be like and that. I think there needs to be a website where it's interactive. Like you you, you click mm-hmm. on a line mm-hmm. and then it shows the creation like it, a, a gif like a short clip will show the creation of that god. And then you click on a battle, then it shows like Callie like killing this guy. Then you should like just like why is this not a thing? There's a billion Hindus out there and there's like how is this not a thing yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, make that a thing. All right. Anyways, um, are you gonna make your own YouTube channel or something that we could promote? Me? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have my own YouTube channel as of yet. <laughs> if you ever Actually, do I make it, I don't have that much time. Also, like to do YouTube okay, okay. now. Well, well, thank you for sharing your time with us. Sorry if I, sorry if it's hard yeah. for me to. I'm gonna spend more time understanding your story so I could like know exactly what you're referring to. But I'm sorry if it's like. This is called the curse of knowledge, like because you've been growing up with these stories, so it's like it's so apparent for you that I should get it. But obviously, it's like the names are very foreign to me. Yeah, and... the names are complicated, actually. Yeah, I think but the I names w- are even complicated for some Indians. Like uh, even the Indians who are not that much familiar with complicated Sanskrit words and all. I mean, and if they're completely alien, even for Indians, the names are complicated. Some of the names. Okay, but I'm gonna like slowly become more familiar with it because I don't want to like I feel like you were disappointed with my understanding of your story a little bit, but I don't I don't want to disappoint you. No, so I'm gonna try. I, I understand that obviously. Uh, I mean, a person who doesn't I mean who is listening it for the first time. I mean, yeah. for him it is it is a bit difficult to understand the stories because. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try my best because it's so interesting stories. It's fun. It's fun. I just need more visual aid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, and, gonna... and I just want to mention one last thing. So this is about the inclusion of uh, different kinds of things in the Hindu society. So in Bengal, what happens that the goddess, I mean the idol of the goddess that is prepared. So there is a ritual that in the soil from which. Ooh, he was gonna make his last point. You make you the cut. idol with that soil. You need Wait, you to cu- make sorry, the sorry, soil you need from to go a back. Bengal. You need to go back. You got I, cut. Uh, have I gone out? You're back. You're back. You're back now. Say it again. Say it fast before you get cut again. Oopsie. You didn't say it fast and now you got cut again. All right. Bring it. We. Oof. All right. Make your last point very fast before you get cut again. So, yeah. So, they make the. That's the point. They make the brother, soil from a brothel in the. I mean, soil uh, with which they make the idol. The goddess okay. idol. They want to include. They want to say that the, the the goddess is the representative of the feminine. So the prostitute is also. I mean, I mean, what can I say? The feminine is not complete without them. They wanted want to represent the complete femininity. So the prostitutes may be socially uh, somewhat unacceptable, but uh, they want to include. I mean, her also in the form of the goddess because the goddess is the ultimate representative, and hence they mix the soil from a brothel uh, in the. A bro- in the soil. A bro- a bro- I don't understand. What's brothel. A bro- that is a prostitute house. And the a house brothel. A brothel. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. The soil from a brothel, they make a goddess from the soil of a brothel to represent prostitutes? No. I mean, uh, uh, they, they say that the soil is Lokhi Mati or the auspicious soil. They say that the soil of a brothel is auspicious. Now, why they say it, there are multiple explanations, maybe, but they just do it. That, that is the thing they do. They don't I don't understand. Entire... I, I have no idea what you just said. They get the soil from the brothel, and what does happen? A god, a god they comes from mix there? It. They, they just mix it slightly with the soil from which they're making the idol of the goddess. Oh, to, so that to do what? To be re- to inclusive? To do what I don't know, but uh, they say that the soil of a brothel is auspicious in some sense. Uh, now there are multiple explanations for why it is auspicious. Some people say that those who go to the visit the brothel, they leave their auspiciousness there, and all this. Like I don't know, there are multiple oral ex- traditional explanations, but I don't know. I mean, I think the main reason was to include everyone. I mean, it was to give the uh, prostitutes some kind of social status. I mean, so that the people don't. So that's exactly what I said. Are... They make from the bro- from the soil of the brothel. They make a god, like they make an idol to be inclusive to prostitutes. That's what I said. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. In, in, yeah that okay. And the goddess, they want to say that the goddess is there in the prostitutes also because the goddess is a feminine representation of the feminine. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, the prostitutes also have the god, I mean, goddess like thing in them. They are also the represent, I mean, human representative of goddess. So, I like that. See, I like that. See, pause, they're trying to supportive of sex workers. That's great. That's beautiful. Something I, yeah, good. Yeah, because the society may despise them, but uh, it is showing that, but. 
uh, how can I say, we should be inclusive towards them. That is the main idea maybe behind this tradition. And I like that mm. tradition actually, in some sense. Um, okay, cool. All right, let's end the stream yeah. here. Guys, subscribe okay, to, oh, bye. this is being, guys, guys, no, before you go, I'm going to tell everybody that we stream this on my personal channel, Armin Navabi, but then we're going to upload it on Atheist Republic. So consider, if you're watching this on Atheist Republic, consider subscribing to my own personal channel as well, Armin Navabi, link in the description, um, if you're watching this on Atheist Republic. Anyways, uh, thank you, guys. Bye. Hold on. Just stay bye. here. Wait, don't go. Don't go, don't go.